All right, so in this video, I'm going to create an out of bounds grid for Goose's map. And I have modified his map slightly because I was having issues spawning on it. But other than that, I'm, the map is pretty much unmodified. Because I've actually made a couple attempts at doing this and I've been trying to streamline the tutorial as much as I can, I'm actually going to delete a couple of things here while we're recording. So, first things first, I'm just going to get rid of that. That's actually from the previous. So, here we go. This guy needs to get zeroed first. Okay. Alright, so at this point I've got my brush selected, I've got it zeroed. I prefer it zeroed, and at the very least it should be snapped. Either way, to set up your brush first, you want it to be hollow and it needs to have a wall thickness of zero. If this is a cube, it translates exactly, it's just wall thickness, but if it's a cylinder or sphere, you need the wall thickness to be, or rather, the radius, the radii, to be the same. The inner and outer, that is. So, build that. Now I'm going to scale it just so it fits the map. Yo. And when I'm doing scaling, I use, I always crank it down to one, but for my movement, I like to snap it on 1024 for these really big things. Okay. That looks pretty good. So, now we're going to add, move the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the brush out of the way. Now I get to have fun with the surface properties. So, so you want to select the matching surfaces of the brush and then go into the surface properties of them. You do want to set up the scaling. Um, one is a good default. You can set it to, I, I wouldn't go below 0.75. The plan is to have 0.75 represent one meter on the um, scan or rather the out of bounds grid material at the moment it doesn't though because the material currently was made prior to the units unit scale being actually even set but either way so at set at one right now it's applied you want to disable any lighting related information so just disable these three good to go all right now you want to go into brush properties which is just click the brush f4 you want to make sure that it uh, collides with, it blocks everything. So you're good to go there. And then I believe, or, uh, that's fine. All right. Now at this point, we can apply the material to it. You want to do all of what I just did before you apply the material, and that's because the material itself actually becomes, it's a clear material, so it's a pain in the ass to um, select. So I'm going to go here into FF Game Content. Here's the current material. I'm just going to right click and apply, and as you see, it's already working. Uh, this is the previous grid that I was messing around with. I'm going to delete it. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. All right. So at this point, now you want to go back and select the brush. You want to right click and convert to static mesh. I'm going to select FF game content, but I select suggest you do not. Uh, for anybody who's mapping, what you should do for any custom content, you should make your own either. Um, user specific as in the case of 80 centimeters here I got a user specific one or map specific um, package I would it, prefer a map specific one unless you actually do have assets that are being used across multiple maps but for now I'm just going to put it in game content just because it's easy to find so call it ashes OB grid okay going to the collision component here I want to oh this is always oh, the fun thing I forget about that uh, 
apply. I believe this works. Close. So collision. I want to view the collision mesh. Where is it? Show. Here we go. Okay. So the collision looks to be set up. Should be good to go. Now we actually want to delete the brush, the originating brush. And it, you don't really need to remember the position too much, but either way, just can drag this guy in. I suggest offsetting him again. Um, select away, and then you just reselect, and of course it goes. So at this point, I have my snapping done, and then I do suggest the use snapping. And then I'm just going to raise it up again. All right. Oh, and I need to rebuild geometry since I deleted that brush. That's why you're seeing this weird scan line thing there. So now it all looks good. I think if I turn on real time now, the thing might be broken. But either way. So this is coming together nicely. I believe. May even be ready to play. I'm going to save the map. Oh, never mind. Actually, I need to go into the properties of the mesh itself and disable the lighting things. This is the step that most people miss. Um, you want to go here into the static mesh actor section and specifically the uh, lighting and disable everything. Just if it's in this section, disable it. Lighting channels, there you can just everything in this section disabled. Now, as far as light mass, yeah, it's it, it already inherited everything, so you're good to go. You might check the collision component, but it should be set up. I believe now we should be good to go. Now I say this a lot, it doesn't mean that we're actually good to go, it just means that I'm going to press play and hope. What just happened there? Oh, I know what happened. The collision component for this guy, it is, I'm in technically inside of it so it actually is not working use no all right so i actually do want to remove the collision yes and i want to collide complex see this is yeah here it is so you want to use or rather disable all of these and this should collide complex now i'm going to save it Go back in here and double check the collision components for this one. Here we go, collide complex. Want to make sure that that is enabled. File, save current level. All right, now I shouldn't die. You are on. There we go. Okay, let's go see if I can actually hit the mesh though. Because that's always the hard part actually. Lighting is easy once you know to convert brushes to meshes. That's actually, I think that's what the step that everybody misses is that they, um, uh, I've put up a couple posts that have gone over you making it into a mesh, but at the same time you have to find them. There's no official post. So the volume should be coming up here in a second. Where are you at? Uh, ah, here we go. Yeah, there we go. So. As you can see, I've hit the out of bounds grid. Now, if you want, th this is an absolute blocking grid. As you can see, it's, I mean, when I say absolute, it means that I actually can't go through it. Nothing can go through it. Um, you might set it up to allow projectiles to go through if you don't want people um, hitting the walls and, I don't know, using the out of bounds grid for splash jumping or rather but that's probably the only thing you'd want to consider you do want it to block weapon models probably and such but as you can see now the mesh it's not casting any shadows on the map and it's not really you actually can't even see it until you get close and it actually the distance which the mesh shows up is actually it falls off pretty quick so i'm actually going to change the material it needs to be changed anyways so it's properly scaled this is an interesting map though. It uh, It's definitely a bit dark at the moment, but at the same time the lighting needs to be rebuilt and such, so it's not using um, light mass lighting, so that's probably the issue that's going on here. 
either way, that is how you set up the out of bounds grid. And as I said, the key step is you need to convert the brush to a mesh. And then for these, you need to actually com collide complex. I even forgot that one. I just remembered as soon as I did it. But you do want to set it to collide complex, and then you want to make sure that it has no collision mesh, which by default it shouldn't have a collision mesh. And then you want to make sure that it has disabled all of the simple collision me methods. Um, if you use something like a sphere or a cylinder, uh, just make sure that you, you have no wall thickness. You don't, because you're actually using a mesh, you don't have to use a brush to create it. It's just the easiest way to create a out of bounds grid and when you need one. Um, but for anybody who has like Max or is good with Blender, you can always make just a default uh, material. Uh, the issue would be is you'd need to uh, set up the UV map on the material and such like that. That's why it's probably easier just to use a brush. But that's it for this video, and I'm sh shout out to Goose for making this map. It's quite neat. I'm interested to see what it looks like with the light. Um, sorry for blowing out eardrums. Probably am, because the game is probably quite a bit louder than my voice. Other than that, that's it for this video. I've tried to keep it short, but it's gotten quite long. Thanks for watching.